In this video, we're going to focus on the tooltip itself. I'm going to customize the tooltip. I'm going to start with the first part of the tooltip. And this is part seven of the candlestick plugin chart for Chart.js or basically our own custom plugin basically. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on the first part of the tooltip where we have the high, uh, sorry, the open, high, low and close value in our tooltip. And you can see at the top of the tooltip has the title where we only see the month the year and the date number and we remove the time from it. So let's start to look how to do this. So now let's start to continue and this is part seven. And what we want to do now is at least to solve the tooltip. Right now the tooltip is just not appealing. So let's look at this. And what we want to do here, we want to put in four values, which is the default value that we have in here, basically these four here, and we want to specify the date like that here and then eventually i think that would be nice that's an extra is to have an icon here that we can use maybe font awesome for that so we're going to customize this tooltip a bit but before that we need to remove the existing data in there which is not applicable or at least adjust them so let's do first the title of the tooltip which is basically the date what i want to display here i find that the time has no value for this because this is just based on a single day value. So you can just put in the day of June number three, comma 2020 or 2022. So that's it. So let's go down here and then we go in the options here. Once we're right here, uh, let's do, we have to make a plugin object. I want to do it just after the scales here. So that is this one here. So after the scales, comma, we're going to say your plugins. And then what we're going to do here, bracket, and we could do basically two things. First of all, we could remove this item here because as you can see here, I realized this has no value. If you have only a single chart, you should not want to deactivate it. So let's remove the legend for that first. So we're going to say yeah, legend display false comma or no need for comma here, but comma there. Then what we want to do is here the tool tip. And for the tooltip, we're going to work on that. But before I even do that, what I want to do here is because I want to pinpoint the title and, or sorry, that this is what we call the title tooltip, which is the bolded font item. So for that, luckily that's very straightforward. All we have to go here is in the X scale, the time object, comma here. And then we have here a wonderful command that they have to build in. We we'll say a tooltip format. And then we can say here, what you want and in this case I want to have the month you can do here uh, triple M or if you want only the numeric version is double M but always caps locks for the M for the month this is very important everything else the reason why is because there's also minutes and minutes are with small characters so to avoid the conflict they have forced a capitalized M here then what we can do is for the day if you do double double D uh, for the, basically the day, so you want to have two digits with double D in that case, but I want, only want the single so that we don't have a zero. We just have three June, for example, comma, and then the year triple Y. Save this, refresh. And then there we are, and then, oh, all right, interesting. So we don't, we see this doesn't work. So let's see what am I missing here. Let's save this, or maybe let's remove this one here first, tool tip, save, and just, check again if this works all right interesting i'll just going to check what's going on all right so when i open my console log i immediately notice it which is very very bad from my point of view we need to make sure we have a capitalized m but not a capitalized y so make sure you have this in small characters only this one should be capitalized my bad i'm telling you not to do it for the month but i'm doing it for the year anyway as you can see here now we have now only the item and if I just remove for example the year so you will see here and if we do we just uh, well let's do it like this save refresh you can see here now we only see June number three comma and the comma is basically this if we do this here I'm not sure if this will respond or well, apparently it does respond very nicely so in that case we could do here anything else we could say here stock ABC etc etc but this is basically oh make sure that this is small letters again sorry that's just a bad habit save refresh all right so this works nicely so we have this done that's done let's look now at the tooltip itself here and then what i want to do here is i'm going to create a callback 
And what we're going to do here, and this is a callback with an SO callbacks. And then in here, what I want to show is the item, but I need to remove this body part, the body segment of the tooltip. So the tooltip consists of multiple segments. One is the tooltip or body, another one is the header, and we have also a footer. But we can even do before footer, after footer, etc. etc. There are so many options. I have a whole video for that if you are interested. In that case, I'm going to recommend you understanding uh, how to customize the tooltip in Charge.js. Yes. There's a whole video with every function you need. So in case you need to know that. Um, but what I want to do here is, well, we have here the callbacks. And what I'm going to do here is, we're going to grab here the label. And the label is basically the one here with the color. The color box and the text. That's the label area in the body. And what I'm going to do is, because for some reason, Charge.js doesn't allow us to remove this. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say a CTX, then a callback functionality, and all I'm going to do here is say return blank. Save this, refresh, there we are. So it is blank, but you might see some slightly padding at the bottom. I'm going to accept that. That's the only thing we cannot remove. So I'm going to accept this tiny error or tiny difference. So then what I want to do is, I'm going here up now, and let's start to work on the body area and what I want to do here is uh, let's see we're going to call this well basically it's the body but it is before the body so I'm going to say before body and then here again CTX a callback functionality put a comma here and then what we want to do here is basically this I want to return and what I want to return is I want to put in the uh, open a high, low, and close value, but I will put them in a separate line each. So we our return here will be ABC. If I do now this, save, refresh. All right, interesting. We get a mistake here or an error. So let's see here. Before body uh, colon, we have that. So what am I missing? Let's open up developer tab. Unexpected colon at 244. All right. So 244, we have unexpected colon, of course. Return without. The column there we are so now i have a return of abc so this works fine so what i want to do here is because i want to have like multiple lines to have multiple lines you need to work with an array so what i'm going to do here is constant and i'm going to say here the body array and i'm going to just you can give it any kind of value of course and here this is an array and i'm going to to make it neat i'm going to break them down for every separate line what i'm going to use here is back ticks yes so this is very important, and what I realize is maybe what would be even value, valuable for us is to understand what does this CTXC truly mean. Because I went ahead of myself, and if you are just looking at it, you don't, you might not understand that. So I'm going to say here, let's look at this. What is this CTX here? Open up the developer tab. If I hover over it, then it will start to see. But I realize we have this 100 on line 169. Let's remove that one. So we have no uh, distraction. Save that, refresh. Now if I hover over, you can see here, every time I hover over a specific item, it will start to trigger. And what does it trigger? Well, it triggers the tooltip details only for that tooltip that is related to this bar. So that is very nice because you can see here, we get only this June number three, which is this here, that's correct, and all the matching values of it. So what we really want to do here is just to grab the specific values of these. And we can just grab these and put them in there. Uh, so let's start to work on that. And you can see here as well, index data number two, in case we need that. In this case, we really don't need to have any of these because we can just grab them from here below in the raw data. So that saves us a lot of code and um, effort. So let's scroll down here, go back to the code in the tooltip that is here, the body array. And what we can say here now is, well, let's look at what we want. We want to say here, backtick, backtick. I'm going to use backticks here because we will be using certain commands to grab this specific item. For example, I want to have the open. Let's start with the O because that's the official structure. So O comes from index zero. Then we go to raw and then letter O. So we're going to say here, let's do this first, dollar sign. And then here, a curly braces. And then in here, we're going to say CTX. And this CTX was index zero. Now we say it dot raw dot o. Make sure that's a real o. 
And if I save this and let's put in this one in here, you will see it starts to work. Save, refresh. Hoover over this 1.2, 1.1, 125. So that's most likely because it's up here. So I, I will accept these items here. So what we're going to do now is the next part, and is what we want to have here. The O. Let's make that like a capitalized O, and there we are. And once we have this, put a comma. We're going to do the next one, which is also like that. But now this is the high value. So in the uh, open, high, low, and close order, the uh, candlestick plugin or chart. That is the order. So we're going to use the same order like that. We're going to copy this. Put it in here. Say here letter H. All right, there we are. Let's come on this, and I'm going to copy this again. There we are. So we put them in there, and then we say here this is lowest value, and this is the C for close value. Here's a C and L. Save this. Refresh. Now you see here. There we are. So we could put them in one single line here, but I think this is a bit more neat to have them separated. It's a bit more clear. But what I do look at this, if you look at the numbers, it is. Uh, it should be since this is just financial numbers. I want to have it separated like 250 with 5 and 0. So we have to have always two decimals. So what I'm going to do here, in here I'm going to say uh, dot and then to fix and force two decimals always no matter what. There we are, there we are, and there we are. Save this, refresh. Let's close that, there we are. And there we have these items. That is absolutely phenomenal. So the next part, what I want to do is because we're missing our color here, and I think what would be even more interesting is to put it with a font awesome, where you have, for example, an arrow down if it's red, and an arrow up if it's green. So that will be in the next video.